in the, in the introductory video to the Hardy-Weinberg equation, I gave some conditions for the Hardy-Weinberg equation to hold. And what I want to do in this video is go into a little bit more depth and go and have a little bit more of a discussion on the conditions for the Hardy-Weinberg equation. Now just to review what the Hardy-Weinberg equation is all about, if we have a population with a gene, say for eye color, and let's say that gene comes in two, ver two versions. One is the allele that produces blue, one is the allele that produces brown. If P is the frequency of the blue allele, Q is the frequency of the brown allele. Well, and if they're the only two versions, well if you add the frequency of P of the blue plus the frequency of the brown, they're going to add up to 100%. Or one, and if you square both sides of this, you would get this e this expression right over here. And we talk about that this is the probability, or you could say the frequency of being a homozygous, a homozygous for the blue. This is the pop the probability of being of having two alleles for the brown, and then right here in the middle. This is the probability of being a heterozygote. And why is that? Well, because you could get a blue from your mom, or and a brown from your dad, or a blue from your dad and a brown from your mom. So there's two ways to get that PQ combination. Now the key idea here is Hardy-Weinberg assumes a stable allele frequency. So let me write that really big. Because all of these other conditions that you might see are really like, well, what are all the different ways that you could, you could somehow not have stable allele frequency? So let me write this down. Stable allele frequency. Stable allele frequency. So a lot of times there's a temptation to memorize a bunch of th stuff. You, you might want to do that. But the more important thing is to get the underlying idea. And the underlying idea is, well, will something somehow cause the allele frequency to be unstable? And actually, another way to say stable allele frequency is no evolution. No evolution. Evolution is a change in the heritable traits in a population. And that will include a change in allele frequency. And if you think about the two ways that you could have a population evolving, well, you can, you can have selection. So we're going to assume no selection. Actually, there's more than two ways. You could have genetic engineering and all sorts of things. So we're going to assume, but the, 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 the mainstream ways, I guess you could say, we, we can assume no selection. We can assume no genetic drift. Remember, selection is certain traits that are make, make that organism more fit for that environment, well, those traits are going to be more likely to be passed on. Genetic drift is random chance changes in the allele frequency. It could be due to small populations. It could be due to, to uh, members of the population migrating or some type of bottleneck effect, some natural disaster that really gets you to that small population. So that's the big picture. But given that big picture, I want to dive deep into some of the assumptions that you might see in your biology class, just so you feel comfortable with them and you see that we're talking about the same thing. So the ones that I mentioned in that introductory video are no selection, and that's consistent with no evolution. We, I also talk about no net mutation, also consi consistent with no evolution. Once again, we don't want to change the allele frequency. If there was net mutation, one of those, maybe some of those blue versions of the gene get a mutation and they're, not, they're, they're now maybe a different version or they're not, definitely not blue anymore. So the allele frequency would change. The reason why we care about large population is, a set, is mainly for genetic drift. If you have a very small population, just due to random chance, it's, it's more likely that the allele frequencies can change appreciably. Now other conditions that you will often see is, are things like random, random mating, that whether, whether uh, an organism has a, the blue or the brown version of the gene, that that doesn't make them any more or less desirable to a member of the opposite sex. And if you think about it, you might say, well, isn't that a form of se selection? And you'd say, well, yes, it, it, it kind of is. But this is sometimes broken out as another way. Now also, no migration, that you don't have uh, the population isn't isn't growing by by other organisms entering it, or isn't shrinking by other organisms leaving, or there's not a mixing of population between two populations. And once again, it's all in it's all because we care about stable allele frequencies. Now, if we want to go even further than that, and sometimes you will hear these types of things mentioned. Although I just mentioned the five mainstream things, which all boil down to stable allele frequency, no evolution, no selection, no genetic drift. But sometimes 
you know, we are assuming that we are dealing with diploid organisms, that you're getting one set of chromosomes from your mom, one set of chromosomes from your dad, or one version of an allele from your mom, one version of an allele from your dad. And you might say, well, how can you be other than diploid? Well, you could be a, there are, there are tetraploid populations, especially this can happen in, in plants, where you could get two sets of chromosomes from your mom, two sets of chromosomes from your dad. We are assuming, we are assuming sexual reproduction. that we're not dealing with cloning and or just budding where you're just a copy of another organism from generation to generation. We're assuming that whether you are blue or brown, whether you have those versions, that that's not correlated with what sex you have, what sex you are. So allele frequency allele frequency same in in all sexes in all sexes and we're assuming sexual reproduction once again we're assuming one where there's only two sexes so you could you know if you were to to think about if you were to let your imagination go wild you could imagine a lot of other constraints to put here or or other ways that the where you could no longer have apply the hardy weinberg where this is we have two alleles we're assuming sexual reproduction diploid you're getting a mom from, from your mom from your dad and just here are all the conditions that help us ensure that we have a stable allele frequency Now the one thing you're saying, okay, I can, you know, diploid sexual reproduction, okay. But isn't isn't, you know, isn't there always a chance for a little bit of genetic drift? Isn't there, you know, just the the history of the world is that we have this evolution? And the answer is yes. And so the the actual reality is is that there's very few places where you could point to uh, very few populations if any where you could say, "Oh, that's a pure uh, we can purely apply Hardy Weinberg there." But like a lot of things in in the applied sciences, it's a very good approximation for many populations. And so that's why it is useful.